Hugh Jackman played Wolverine for 17 years, beginning as a relatively unknown actor brought on at the last minute to replace Doug Ray Scott in 2000's X-Men. But that epic run of films in which Jackman came to inhabit the character for a generation of cinema goers finally came to an end in Logan. The death of Wolverine in 2017's Logan wasn't easy for any comic book fan to watch. But in this video, I will tell you guys how we will be able to celebrate his return from the grave in the MCU. But first, since every superhero death is taken with a grain of salt these days, the first question worth answering is yes, Wolverine really did die in the Logan movie. No fake outs, tricks or retcons here. Anyway, before we get started, I am Shubham and welcome to Unnecessary Comic Stuff where we talk all things related to comics and today we have a very interesting topic related to one of my most favorite characters in Marvel Comics, Wolverine. And possibly the most anticipated thing that everybody is waiting for, Wolverine in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So let's get started. Wait a minute! Sorry for this but before we actually start all you got to do is like this video and subscribe to our channel for more such content related to comics. Please watch this video till the end and check out our social media pages. Links are given in the description box below. Now it's hard to think of anybody else besides Hugh Jackman playing Wolverine but since he's already stated that he's done playing Wolverine. And maybe if the MCU had started just a little bit sooner, he could have reprised the role, which is a depressing thought. But moving on, he has said that he is no longer going to be playing Wolverine. So eventually somebody else will have to step in the shoes and take on the role of Wolverine. And good luck to him because that actor is going to be judged severely and compared to Hugh Jackman's Wolverine, which everybody pretty much loves. And although we don't know who the actor that is going to be playing Wolverine is, we do have a little bit of speculation about what Wolverine could possibly be like when he finally does make his MCU debut. So let's break it all down. The first theory is that when Wolverine finally does enter the MCU, he is going to be positioned as more of an anti-hero instead of a typical hero. Instead of being a black and white character, he is going to be more of a grey character. Now, we are assuming the new plan for this new Wolverine when he comes to the MCU is going to be to somehow differentiate him from Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. Everybody at Marvel Studios knows that everybody loved Hugh Jackman and to simply replace him with the same type of character is not the smartest move. So taking Wolverine and instead of making him a hero, make him more of an anti-hero. It actually makes a lot of sense for Marvel to do that now. There is a good possibility that Marvel Studios may just be trying to make a very comic accurate version of Wolverine. An anti-hero doesn't necessarily mean an evil person or somebody who wants to do bad. It could simply mean that they are not a typical hero and Wolverine isn't your typical hero. He smokes, has many relationships, he is very aggressive, he curses a lot and he is basically an animal. He also kills and he kills on purpose. There are times in the comics where he kills and he probably shouldn't. He probably should have restrained him a bit but he has a basic instinct to kill and in some ways is kind of a homicidal maniac but nonetheless he usually does kill to do good. He may be unconventional but he is still a hero. It may just not be in typical fashion, hence anti-hero. Wolverine does have a very dark path covered in death and destruction and sometimes he can go into a mindless fury. However, he does have a sense of justice and he does whatever he can to protect his loved ones, his fellow mutants and X-Men members. And he does defend the innocent. He may not be the perfect hero but in our book, he is definitely the perfect anti-hero. Another theory we have comes from the recent The Return of the Wolverine comic book story in which Wolverine was resurrected by the Queen of the Dead. In the second to last issue of the Return of Wolverine series, Logan finally met Persephone, the apparent mastermind behind his entire story since he rose from the dead. Her mutant gift? To reanimate the dead as either mindless bodies for her to pilot telepathically or semi-automated drones. It was her plan to use him as a weapon or tool like all the other undead mutants and made it as far as having Wolverine serve on a special strike team of Persephone piloted soldiers. That is until she learned the one truth known by every other person who thought they could control the Wolverine. If something can't be killed, definitely don't bring it back to life. Sooner or later, even Persephone doesn't quite know how he managed it. Wolverine's mind was shaken out of its haze to being his path towards his old back self. And by the issue's end, Wolverine finally reaches his destination. It might seem too good to be true to say that the return of Wolverine 
ends by restoring Logan completely, but it sure seems that way. Logan explicitly tells his opponent that he has finally remembered all his past battles, identities and trauma, and despite Persephone's offer of a fresh start in a new world, Logan makes it clear for everyone. I am back and I am Wolverine, and that's the way it's gonna be. Marvel can't make a solo Wolverine movie that surpasses Logan, so it should instead develop an entirely different approach to the character in the MCU. Marvel should take an entirely different approach to the character and the X-Men as a whole than what Fox did with its own franchise. For years, fans have wondered what Marvel would do with the mutants if they had access to them. Now, thanks to Disney's acquisition of Fox, that question can finally be answered. However, with the amount of time that has passed, it seems unlikely that Jackman will reprise the role for the MCU. As a result, Marvel's best option is to recast the character, but not right away. It's possible that instead of starting off with an X-Men movie, Marvel may introduce some of the characters individually. For example, Magneto could be set up in WandaVision, Storm could be a guest character in Black Panther 2, and Wolverine could get a cameo in The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Due to Wolverine's popularity and the level of attention Hugh Jackman's portrayal garnered over the years, there is a great deal of interest in how MCU will make use of the character. It's hard to imagine a solo Wolverine movie set in the MCU ever beating Logan. Logan was able to do things with Wolverine that Marvel simply can't in the MCU. All Marvel movies so far have been PG-13, and there is no reason to believe that Disney will change that formula. Because Logan isn't in any way like the usual popcorn superhero blockbuster. Logan is totally different to any film that Marvel has ever made. Even though Marvel tends to experiment with different genres and tones, they'll never go as far as Fox did with Logan. In Marvel Comics, dozens of heroes have been counted as members of the X-Men. It has no shortage of high-profile characters worthy of being in the movies. Some got their fair share of screen time in Fox's X-Men franchise, like Storm, Professor X, Magneto and Mystique, while others were severely underutilized, such as the case with Angel, Cyclops and Nightcrawler. Part of the reason for this was that Fox made Wolverine the centerpiece of the X-Men franchise for far too long. The first X-Men trilogy felt less like a movie about a team of superheroes and more like a movie about Wolverine, with the rest of the X-Men being relegated to supporting roles. This mistake is one Marvel has awarded making in the MCU. While Robert Downey Jr's Iron Man was easily the most popular character in Infinity Saga, Marvel never allowed itself to forget about the importance of Captain America and Thor and the others. That's why Marvel was able to build so many different profitable franchises. Marvel should stick with this approach when making plans for the X-Men. Wolverine doesn't need to be any more important to the MCU than Cyclops, Storm, Jean Grey, Beast, Angel, Iceman or Rogue. Marvel may find out that Wolverine isn't the only X-Men who can hold his own movie. Some of these characters may be deserving of this treatment as well. What Marvel should do is introduce some of these characters first in an effort to set up the X-Men and then bring them all together for a team-up. Wolverine could be a part of that, or perhaps even better, he should be saved for a sequel that brings in a new class of X-Men. Unlike what was done in Frox's franchise, each X-Men member Marvel uses should feel important in their own way to the larger MCU. In order to make another appearance in the MCU, Hugh Jackman's version of Wolverine has only one good option, antagonize Wade Wilson, portrayed by Ryan Reynolds, by appearing in Deadpool 3. Deadpool 3 allows a compelling opportunity for Jackman to return to the MCU in a way that would feel both refreshing and distinctive from any of the MCU's other X-Men plans. It's obvious that Reynolds and Jackman have natural chemistry and both Deadpool and Deadpool 2 have already set up a litany of Wolverine jokes. Deadpool 2's widely popular post credit scene also sets up the possibility of a Jackman appearance for Deadpool 3. Jackman's intense, rugged Wolverine clashes with Reynolds' clownish Deadpool. By sharing more screen time in Deadpool 3, Deadpool and Wolverine could emerge as a perfectly dysfunctional duo. It's easy to imagine a Deadpool 3 wherein Wolverine and Deadpool undermine each other with clever pranks and well-crafted verbal pot shots, since this is precisely what Jackman and Reynolds pretend to do in real life. With Kevin Feige confirming the fate of Deadpool 3 in the MCU recently, we can only imagine what they'll do with the character. 20th Century Fox sold the X-Men rights to Disney in 2019, and it's not clear whether Disney will try to sanitize the Deadpool brand for a wider viewership or disavow the property entirely. For now, the latter seems impossible. 
In any case, the movie will only be improved by bringing in Hugh Jackman, the man Ryan Reynolds loves to hate. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier has a chance to introduce Wolverine into the MCU and link him closely to Captain America. As well as establishing a new cap in the shape of Sam Wilson, portrayed by Anthony Mackie, the Disney Plus show has an opportunity to retcon the entire history of the Super Soldier program that created Captain America while tying it to arguably the X-Men cinematic era's most famous character. And it's all thanks to a hidden page of Captain America's history that could be explored in The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. The forthcoming Disney Plus show is rumored to include Isaiah Bradley, the first black Captain America who was introduced in 2003's Marvel Limited series, Truth, Red, White and Black, as a super soldier created by clandestine experiments on African-American soldiers. Bradley's backstory in the comics means that Disney Plus show could also seed Wolverine's existence. Even if he didn't appear, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier could lay the groundwork for his origin. During Project Rebirth, the Weapon Plus program would also create its most famous subject, Weapon X, thereby creating the Wolverine. Given the MCU's fascination with super soldiers, it would certainly make sense to link Wolverine to what has gone before, particularly as it also seeds the X-Men in the MCU in a tangible way rather than dropping them out of thin air. Although many audiences would want to see Logan claw his way back to the big screen as soon as possible, it may actually be smarter for the MCU to release a different version of Wolverine first, namely X-23, Logan's clone daughter who should be played by Daphne Keene, the talented actress who first brought her to live action in 2017's Logan. While most audiences are aware of X-23 from Keene's critically acclaimed performance, the character actually originated in the animated X-Men Evolution series a female clone created from the original Wolverine's DNA. X-23, or Laura Kinney as she would be called, was bred to be the perfect assassin for an organization called the Facility. Like Wolverine, Laura has a powerful healing factor and animal senses, as well as enhanced speed, strength and reflexes. She also has adamantium claws, although in her case she has two claws in each of her arms and a pair of foot spikes that come out of her feet. Although introduced as a teenager, Laura was allowed to age over time and grew into a young woman who ended up becoming a guardian for her clone sister, Gabby. When Logan died following the death of Wolverine's story arc, Laura wound up taking on his name and costume as the all-new Wolverine. Even after Logan returned to reclaim the Wolverine mantle, Laura still considers herself Wolverine and Logan agrees. And considering that Wolverine has lived a long life which will inevitably be retconned into the history of the MCU, it makes sense that he would already have successors in the present day. Keen's version of Wolverine could show up in various MCU films, building up a mystery of who she is and what legacy she is continuing. This could serve to keep Wolverine in the public consciousness without having to recast Hugh Jackman right away. Moreover, as an MCU's new version of Wolverine continues being revealed through rumors and Laura's murky history, Audiences will become more eager for Wolverine to finally reveal himself and more willing to accept him as a separate entity from Jackman's iconic performance. The Wolverine character will obviously need to be recast for future X-Men titles and the time has come for a new Wolverine to join the Marvel movie universe. The producers of the X-Men series are leaving the door open to one day having Hugh Jackman play an old man Logan. But with Marvel acquiring the rights to the comic book mutants, recasting a new younger Wolverine is next and we have got some actors in mind for the role. Though it will be hard for another actor to top Jackman's performance, we have to look at alternatives as after nearly two decades, Jackman has said that he's done playing the beloved character. Fans are guaranteed to have their own top choices in mind for the various versions of Wolverine like old, young, wild, heroic, etc. In a recent interview, Keanu Reeves revealed he always wanted to play Wolverine in the X-Men movies. But Reeves seemed to slam the door on the idea forever, admitting it is too late and it was filled really well. Reeves then went on to clarify that it's Frank Miller's version of Wolverine that he always wanted to play. Carl Urban's performance as Billy Butcher in The Boys has revealed him as the perfect candidate to play Wolverine when X-Men are introduced in the MCU. Beyond having the appropriate physique for the role, Urban has proven himself capable of the nuance needed to do the character justice and played the grizzled fighter and gruff lover with quite ease. His co-star and the boys lead actor Anthony Starr has also expressed interest in playing Wolverine for any upcoming Marvel film. His co-star and the boys lead actor Anthony Starr has also expressed interest in playing Wolverine for any upcoming movies.
When asked which X-Men character he would like to play in a recent interview, Star responded that Wolverine would be his first pick in spite of the big shoes to fill. Luke Hemsworth has also revealed that he'd like to play Wolverine. He also has a similar build to Wolverine and seems to be willing to commit to the part, though the likelihood of Hemsworth nabbing the role depends on when Marvel decides to reboot Wolverine, the actor could be a great choice. Famed internet artist Boss Logic recently posted a picture to Twitter depicting Shia LaBeouf as Wolverine. This new piece of fan art sees LaBeouf sporting adamantium claws, a pair of bleeding bullet holes and smoking a signature cigar. The rendition looks surprisingly perfect, although as the artist admits, it kind of looks like a Jackman. Shia LaBeouf isn't the most traditional choice to play Wolverine, having largely departed from mainstream cinema since his Transformers days. Still, the prospect of seeing LaBeouf in the MCU is quite intriguing. Be sure to let us know in the comments your own picks for the new Wolverine and which actors you think can probably portray the X-Man in his earlier years before he joins the MCU. That's all for now. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you do not miss another update. Also, follow us on Instagram so that you can stay updated on all the developments happening to bring the Wolverine into the MCU. In the meantime, let us know what you think about this in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel and share the word with your friends. See you next week on Unnecessary Comic Stuff.